War on the police by left-wing protesters and Black Lives Matter continues stronger than ever. So-called peaceful protesters in Louisville have gunned down two officers in the name of so-called racial justice. Another leftist campaign to stoke racial divide and disinformation has simply resulted in yet more violence. They're unthinking and they're uncaring. You know this. They don't know the facts. In today's video, we're going to be analysing those facts, giving them to you today. This is Political. My name's Connor Allen, and I'm here with Yian Smith. Hello, everyone. And before we do get into today's video, please do, if you like this, if you want to help us spread our message to more people, please do like and subscribe down below. And of course, the best thing you can do is share the video, post it on your own social media, uh, and also do leave a comment down below. Tell us what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, what you'd like to see, and leave your own opinion. Let's go straight into it. We've got an article here from the Mail Online. Uh, we have Trump saying he's praying for the two Louisville cops as his right. Uh, Trump always the guardian of the police in these sorts of situations. Two Louisville cops have been shot. One suspect is in custody amid violent clashes between police and protesters, sparked by a Kentucky grand jury's decision to charge only one officer involved in the shooting death of Breonna Taylor. This is awful, isn't it? You've got two police officers shot in a hospital wrongly. And you have leftist protesters on the street saying that this was correct, this is justified, and this is the correct course of action. It's madness, isn't it, Yian? It's absolutely crazy. And, and if you actually, if anyone wants to, uh, is watching, go and watch the video yourself. Go and have a look at some of the clips on social media from, from, from what happened. These are just shots fired. Um, just very carelessly into a crowd of riot police as they formed a line, obviously, to um, go forward with the curfew and, and, and uh, carry out the curfew that had been happening in Kentucky. And so it's completely unprovoked. And I think there's two issues here with, with regards to what's happening. One is obviously this racial divide being stoked again, as we know, by all the left-wing media. And the other thing here is you have this false narrative, this not just a false narrative of systemic racism, but the false narrative of the actual facts of what have happened in this particular case with Breonna Taylor. Absolutely. And, and before we do get into the Breonna Taylor case, I mean, people listening, you can have your own opinion on this. But what we don't disagree on is that Police, pe police people should not be shot. They should mm. not be potentially exposed to death doing their job. Okay. If you disagree with that, then please don't watch the video because we don't want to talk to you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> God, I sound like you're a leftist protester. Them. Yeah, you're gonna yeah them. we're going to cancel them. Uh, but listen, okay, it's exactly as you said. This war on police, this, the left has spent the last few months trying to drive, trying their very best to drive a wedge between the police and the minority communities that they serve. Um, they've done everything in their power um, to, cry, to create this illusion of racial, uh, um, uh, systemic racism mm -hmm. and racial divide for their own political um, benefit. It's disgusting, and they're doing it for their own profit, and it's being paid for in the lives of innocent people. Certainly, and... It just shows again. We we've talked about it multiple times, but um, you know the left wing media, not just the left wing media, the Democratic Party, not all of them, but you know many of them um, have shown they have a complete disregard for these officers that are out on the streets doing their job. Uh, they have a complete disregard for um, the sort of um, social situation in America and the social. Um, cohesion among all different races and, and people of all different colors and creeds. They have co complete disregard for people's businesses, their livelihood. They don't care about any of these things. All they care about is trying to continue this narrative. I think now, obviously, and we've spoken about before, they realize that it's turning against them and people are getting concerned now about the violence on the streets. Um, but it's too late because they've already released this mob now and it's spread from state to state to state and here's the newest one it's in louisville now happening and it comes on the back of a decision from a grand jury now you, you can't cry systemic racism you can't say oh this is the attorney general trying to cover up things or this or that 
they've taken it to a grand jury so that the people can decide whether charges should be brought against uh, the cops in this particular case and still they're not happy with that absolutely and this is this is the left through and through isn't it they will stop at nothing to misinform and spread lies they they rely on you not challenging that challenging their narrative so whether that's beyond the taylor where they will repeat over and over that it is murder hmm. which it isn't uh, and we're going to be looking at that a little bit later um but also joe biden one of the first things he did was he he uh, posted he was praying for the lives of the two police officers he was the one who opened the pandora's box he was the one who supported the riots all the mm. way through. He was the one who unleashed these mobs, uncaring. He was the one who kept repeating the disinformation in the Beyond the Taylor case. And suddenly, when the consequences of that become so apparent, he's trying to distance himself from it. It's... It... I just... You, you know, we've talked about this before, but I just don't believe... I think there are just too many people paying attention to fall for... Um, you know this sudden change in narrative for the de from the Democrats and from from Joe Biden from his campaign, uh, because for so long they enabled this mob, they enabled this kind of rhetoric, this kind of behavior, and once it's turning against them to to suddenly change the narrative and make it seem like hey we're the ones that have always been for this, and actually this is Donald Trump's America. I just don't think anyone's going to buy it. He's not in control of what's happening um, inside all of these you know different cities it's up to the governors to figure it out and make sure that you know they they are um making sure that the rule of law is paramount and that violence is not tolerated um and because they've enabled it this is what it's come to uh, people are just you, you, sh shooting at crowds of police they're just shooting at crowds of police like i I've never seen anything like this oh it's absolute nonsense isn't it and there's one thing that happens to me is that it strengthens Donald Trump because that man has always been behind the police. Since day one, he has always safeguarded the police. He's done his best to make sure mm. that they are well equipped, to that there's law and order in the streets. The voters see that. They love him for it. Mm. Time and time again, this has come up and it's only going to benefit Donald Trump. But... We should go on as well into talking about the Breonna Taylor case. So we have here, um, it said it handed down its decision to indict just one of the officers involved in Taylor's killing, Ed Hankinson, in charges of wanton endangerment for shooting into the homes of the 26-year-old EMT's neighbours when they executed a warrant on March 13th. This is, of course, after police went round to the apartment of Breonna Taylor, or was it her, her boyfriend's apartment, they, they announced their presence, mm. opened the door, were shot at, two officers were hit from, from shots fired by Kenneth Walker, Breonna Taylor's girlfriend, uh, boyfriend. <laughs> oh, did I just misgender him? Uh, I'm sure I'm getting cancelled for that. Um, so they were shot at, they shot back, saw the shadow moving in the darkness, they shot the shadow, and, you know, queued two months of letters of information, and now policemen are getting shot for it. And what, what do you think of the, of the Beyond the Taylor case? I think, you know, it raises two issues. The first issue is um, the uh, Beyond the Taylor's boyfriend, in this case, is the one who shot first. And I think it shows that um, really if there's the person that's most at fault here is him, I would say, because he needs to be more responsible about... Uh, opening fire on it whether or not he thought it was the police or not you need to be responsible you make sure that you actually know what you're doing before you start shooting um and on the other thing is that there's this massive misinformation campaign because so many on blm uh, on the left and blm have rallied behind brianna taylor once they found out that she had died and no one really here is saying that you know i don't i've not heard any argument to say that you know she was right to have been it was right for her to have been shot that's not the case obviously she died it, she was an innocent victim in this um it's a tragic and, accident. yeah and this is a tragic accident and the state have paid out i think it's 14 bil uh, million or something like that to to the family which obviously doesn't bring back her life but uh, it shows that they're admitting that uh, there was you know she should not have died she was not the target of this 
uh, raid in the first place, um, and she died as as a bystander, effectively, in in many ways. So, um, but with regards so, to yeah, sorry, go on. Yeah, so I mean, I would just want to address her very quickly. You know, the lefties they always repeat these these wokies. They uh, they always repeat over and over that it was a murder and hmm. the murder. Well, in the state of Kentucky. If you are to be charged with murder, then the officers will have had to have gone to Beyond the Taylor's apartment, knowing she was there, aiming to kill her. That's not what happened. Nobody believes this is what happened. It's not murder. Okay? Mm. They went there to arrest a drug dealer. Oh, they yeah. were fired upon by this drug dealer. They were fired upon first by this drug dealer. So they, they had a right to self-defense as well. This is why there's no charges. Justice system isn't rigged. The justice system isn't failing. It's working exactly as it's intended to. You just don't like it. Yeah, I mean, there's there's, <laughs> there's multiple reasons to to you can point to in the facts here to show that it's working as intended. Um, the police officer that um, fired with um, as what as they called it the charge wanton endangerment three counts of that he is he has had charges brought to him now by the grand jury and if it is the case that he did do that then he will be prosecuted before that and face punishment for it as regards Absolutely. yeah as regards to the other two officers who shot in the case i don't know if all three shot um you know the the facts have been presented and it's shown that they acted within uh, their right to defend themselves because they were being shot at. So this, to me, is the sign of a justice system working as intended. But the issue is here, um, and we've seen this with multiple cases. We saw this in uh, the, the case in Pennsylvania with the with with the um, man who came and attacked the police officer with a knife and was gunned down and killed. And they rallied behind him and then the facts came out and suddenly they've got egg on the face and it looks kind of silly that people are protesting for a man that, uh, you know, chased down a police officer with a knife. We have a similar situation here is Breonna Taylor was killed. They rallied behind her without knowing the facts of the case. Then when the facts come out, it looks again rather silly because the police were basically, you know, doing their job within the duty of what's expected of them. One of them on this case, you know, it seems that maybe the adrenaline was pumping in, in him and he, you know, acted quite, I don't know if you call it irrationally, but, um, you know, certainly... Panicked or something, he, he yeah, opened careless. fire he was, and, yeah, careless. Yeah, it looks like he was careless um, and he'll be charged for this and he's lost his job because of it. Um, but there's, because of this... Well, this, is the th this is the thing, sorry to interrupt, this is yeah. the thing, because when you speak to those on the left... They, 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 the way they tell the story, it doesn't re bear any resemblance to the established fact, okay? Mm. It was to, we've looked at the reports, we've looked at the media reports, we've looked at everything, and we've concluded from this, drawn the facts, the established facts that were used in the courtroom, right? Mm. But they claim that this was murder, that those police officers were just simply racist and went there with the intent to gun beyond the tailor down it, it has no basis in reality at all you might as well claim that they're they're aliens from mars because about the same amount of evidence exists for that and and i think here this case really highlights why this isn't really about police brutality it's not about evidence it's not about sh you know real systemic racism that's happening um, it's about people rebelling against the system. They don't like the system. They don't like that Donald Trump is the president and they want to do something about that. They're not willing to just vote him out. They, they're they unhappy that their argument isn't winning in, when mm -hmm. it comes to the when it comes to democracy. Um, so they want to get rid of him. And they've spread all of this mis misinformation about this case so much. Like, it's widespread. It's not the established facts in this case are not the story that you hear more often. It's the misinformation that you hear more uh, more often from people who are discussing this and, and talking about this. They're, they're saying things like, oh, they didn't actually have a warrant or, oh, they did have a warrant, but it was a different address and actually the cops got the wrong address. And or, this changes every 10 minutes, right? This changes yeah. literally every day of the case. And, and all of this misinformation 
is is being spread over the social media. Uh, ironically, places like Facebook, which are supposed to be this, you know, right wing cesspool of misinformation, will actually know this is where it's been spreading. And they've altered the facts of the case and they've altered the perception of the case because it doesn't stand up to scrutiny when you do look at the actual facts. And all of these people that have been protesting and, and causing all of this violence and now, you know, maybe killing police officers because of it as well in Louisville, um, they just look ridiculous. Absolutely. Not only ridiculous, but dangerous too. Um, and it is it's, it's, it's exactly as you said, isn't it? You know, they've tried put, presenting their ideas to the people. Deeply unpopular. No one likes their ideas. No one wants we, we sweeping radical reform. So they try to change it a bit. They try to say, oh, well, that's the, you're, you're racist if you disagree with this. Hmm. No, wrong again. But someone else with poor ideas, the American public aren't relating to. It's Joe Biden. So what do you think will happen with the election? Do you think you'll see we'll see a boost for Trump in this? I do. Well, I think um, at the beginning there was that support for Black Lives Matter and people rallied behind the George Floyd case. And uh, because, like you say, Trump has been this law and order president, you know, well, before he was president, he was talking about law and order. Obviously, it was a pivotal part of his campaign. Um, it put, shined him in a bad light. It made him look like he was supporting, you know, this racist police force, uh, systemically racist police force. Um, but now, as the violence has continued and the cities have been burnt, the businesses have been destroyed, the livelihoods have been changed by all of this. And it could be years and years before the damage is undone and they rebuild in many of these cities. Um, it's turned the other way now. And you see that obviously with, with 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 Biden and the rhetoric he's coming out with, trying to change the, hit you know his own narrative. Uh, so I think this does nothing but uh, show people, especially when you look at like you say the established facts in this case. All it's doing is it's turning people away from this mob. They don't want to be a part of this mob. They don't want to support people who have enabled this mob. Um, they they want it to come to an end. Um, and I think really they're given that choice well we've tried appeasing them and they just got more violent so we're probably just going to have to go with the law and order president who says we're going to clamp down on violence but people who want to protest peacefully that's fine absolutely and there you have it folks the left is losing the war on the police americans are rejecting their violence they're rejecting extremism is it only going to boost donald trump that's it for this time. Thank you so much for watching.